Hey friends, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing 10 DIY ideas, crafts that are using glass from the Dollar Tree. They have so many new things at the Dollar Tree in their glass section for this spring season, going into summer season, lots of different options, lots of different beautiful texture on the glass. I was so impressed that I ended up coming up with 10 projects that I wanted to feature here on my channel. So once I figured out all my projects, I purchased them and then I brought them home. Now a couple of tips I wanted to share before I jump into all these projects. Don't forget to get a good heat gun to be able to remove those stickers really easily at the bottom of your jars. It really does change the quality of your projects when those stickers are not removed when we're working with spray paint. So I'm gonna link my heat gun down below in the description box. That's the one that I use. You could use a blow dryer too as well, but make sure you just remove those stickers. The other thing I wanted to share because this is gonna be featuring spray paint on these glass items. These are my new three absolute favorite colors from Rust-Oleum. The colors are so beautiful. There's wildflower blue, French blue and moss green. Definitely pick these three colors up if they make you as happy as they do to me. And with all that being said, all right, now let's get crafting. I grabbed two of these bowls from the glass section, two different heights in these cups, and then also one of these little mini shot glasses they come in a set of three, and then one of these smaller bowls that actually had this rubber lid. Go ahead and take the lid off, and we are going to start by using some E6000. Now, I happen to have started a new tube on this day, so I'm showing my little twist key that I put on it. I had a wonderful subscriber send me this a while back, so I wanted to make sure I feature that. I'll link that down below. And then, did you know that the caps on the E6000s have a little pointy part? That you can go ahead and puncture really easily. I just thought I would point that out too if you are new to E6000. Now I love E6000 because it is a bonding element that allows glass to come together strong and tough. So go ahead and add E6000 to the bottom of those two cups and that shot glass and now we're going to add on those bowls. Now for the shot glass and that smaller bowl go ahead and combine those two together because what we're going to be doing is creating these different heights of treat bowls. Now, I think that these would be so beautiful at a baby shower, at a wedding. You could put these on a food buffet table. You could put them at individual tables. Now, you can see here that I came in with some painter's tape and I covered up just the glass bowl and I used that spray paint on the cup parts so that it brought in some beautiful color. So you could customize that to whatever you want. And then for a little extra fanciness for a party, I decided to come in with some gold leafing. I'm just using Mod Podge. I'm sure there's lots of different ways to use this stuff, but this is how I'm using it. This is just me, do it how you want to, but I thought it would be really beautiful to add some gold leafing. Make sure you use a matte Mod Podge with a satin spray paint. Together, they become seamless and you can't see them. They have these beautiful canister jars, and I loved the size of this glass. Now we're gonna put that lid to the side because we're not gonna be using that on this project, but I love this glass jar because jars like this are super high-end at super expensive high-end home decor stores. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get that look without having to pay those ridiculous prices. This jar was $1.25. So go ahead and take your painter's tape and you can see here that I've got probably about a third of the jar at the bottom that I'm going to be leaving exposed. 
but from the rest up, the other two thirds, I'm going to cover that up with some painter's tape, take it outside, spray paint it a beautiful crisp satin white. Once that is nice and dry and you took off the painter's tape, go ahead and pick whatever floral you want. I'm going to be using some of these Real Touch tulips because I just love these things. I'll link them down below, but I just get mine from Amazon. Go ahead and gather them together in a cluster. As I work with them, I like to kind of zigzag the stem a little bit. That makes them look more realistic and falling all over the place in that beautiful jar we just gave some life to. Then go ahead and tie on a beautiful bow. I'll link this ribbon down below. I love this ribbon too. Honestly, this is my all-time favorite glass jar at the Dollar Tree. I love the copper lid, and I did something with these a while ago. We're going to do something different for this episode, for this video. I am taking these jars. I took them outside. I spray-painted them the moss green from Rust-Oleum, and after they were dry, we're going to go ahead and sand it to bring out the texture of that glass. I love that grid crisscross pattern. It is so beautiful, especially with that green paint. Go ahead and just rough up that top surface, wipe it down with a wipey, and in the end, you've got beautiful storage jars that have that high-end French country farmhouse look. I was chatting with a friend just the other day and we were talking about serving platters and I was telling her how easy it is to make these for parties. I know that this is floating around here a lot on YouTube, but I wanted to show this version. So I'm taking one of these smaller jars that have a lid. I'm taking a bowl and I'm taking a plate. Now I usually see people do plate on plate, but I want you to see that you can use a bowl on plate because it allows you to be able to have a dipping bowl. So I'm using some E6000 and some hot glue, and here's a pro tip. Don't let the hot glue touch the E6000 because the second it does, the hot glue cools off and the lock is not as great. So that hot glue is going to hold that glass in place while that E6000 bonds together. So you can see here with the bowl on top, you can add whatever you want in it that's saucy and have a great time at any party. This project is going to be super whimsical. I picked up a couple of different florally napkins from Home Goods, and then I'm getting three of these teacups from the Dollar Tree. Start by adding some Mod Podge to your cups. We're going to do two of the cups that are going to be decoupage or Mod Podge with these tissue papers on here. The trick about this is that you want to make sure you're being really gentle with that tissue paper or a napkin. Now this napkin is a little bit sturdier because it's a nicer quality napkin and you'll learn that when you buy napkins that are from a different store like Home Goods versus the Dollar Tree, you'll see the quality and the napkins are a little bit tougher where you can rub them around. But if you're working with tissue paper, definitely make sure you're tapping and being very gentle. Now I'm just adding Mod Podge all over this cup and I'm working down that napkin to fit around that whole cup. When I get to the bottom, I just cut off the extra and I'm just simply gluing it all down into place, making sure you can see all the details of the cup. This is going to give you that adorable teacup china look without having to hunt all over thrift stores. They're so hard to find 
everybody's collecting these little teacups and I love teacups. So if you can't find them at your thrift stores, this is a great way to get that look. Go ahead and make sure you wrap that napkin down into the cup and then also come around onto the handle. You can see I cut a piece down of the napkin. And then also I should point out too, sometimes the napkins have a couple of layers to them and you can peel them apart. So make sure you do that so that the napkin's not too thick and it's easy to work with. Now for the rim and for the handle, make sure you're just coming around that curve and gluing it all into place. Now for the third cup, I've decided I'm going to use one of these molds because we're going to make it a little bit different. Two are going to have that napkin tissue paper on it and then the other one's going to be spray painted. I have this beautiful mold. I'll link it down below in the description box. But my favorite way to do this is I always like to add a little bit of flour first and then I work in my air dry clay and then I slowly flip it over and just kind of let it fall into my hand. Once that's in your hand, I actually like to glue it on while it's still wet because it'll allow you to be able to curve it without the wings cracking, especially on things like butterflies and birds and flowers. It's better to apply it while it's still wet so that it can curve around whatever edges you have. Now I'm just taking some E6000 and a paintbrush and I'm just working that around all over and then I'm gonna put that onto my cup. Now make sure when you go to put this down, have the cup in a nice safe place where that little mold air dry clay is not going to slide on you because it will slide if you stand the cup up while the E6000 is still drying. Then I'm going to take some white paint and do two coats inside of those tissue paper or napkin cups. This is going to help bring the opaqueness up more so that you don't see through the cup since it's glass. So that's just another tip I would recommend doing but you don't have to, I just recommend doing it because you're gonna see that pattern come through on those napkins better. Now here is that cup once it was all dry from the butterfly and from the moss green Rust-Oleum spray paint. I'm gonna come in and dry brush on top of that butterfly to bring out the texture in it, which is the reason why I picked that butterfly for this cup. And then I'm going to take my paint and I'm still going to just kind of lightly tap around the cup to distress it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a little stacked pile of teacups. The best way, in my opinion, when I was working on this, I found that if I put the teacup in and then took a pencil and drew a line around it, it made it so I knew where to put the glue without making a big mess with the glue <laughs> because it does get a little messy when you're trying to make these fit right and so that they are standing up nice and sturdy. Now you can see here that I'm tucking in some Spanish moss because at the very top of our teacup, I'm gonna put a little bird's nest. I thought that this would be so beautiful for this time of year, something so fun and whimsical. And you really could do this for any holiday and any season. You just change out what you're putting on that middle cup and what you're putting at the top of the other cup. So now go ahead and just nestle on that third cup, making sure it's all nice and sturdy which is the reason why we're using that pencil line so that we know where to place the cup and we're not struggling when the glue goes on. And I'm using E6000 and hot glue to bind everything together. At the very top, I'm gonna add in this nest. I bought a whole bunch of these from Amazon a while ago. I'll link those down below. I added in a little bit of extra Spanish moss so it matches what's in the cups on the sides. And then now I'm gonna just come in with one of these little eggs. I like to snip the egg a little bit, add glue inside of the egg, and then come all over the outside of the egg. That helps it all lock on there really well without the eggs just popping off since it's just kind of a waxy plastic. They pop off really easy. Now I'm going to use this paper pad from Maggie Holmes. I love this paper pad. It's called Garden Party. I'm going to link that down below as well. But I'm going to cut out a couple of these tags. This is a beautiful paper pad for the springtime and the summertime. And then I'm going to use my crocodile. You guys, did you know the crocodile is actually meant for eyelets? <laughs> I use it all the time here on my channel for so many things, but it's actually used for eyelets. That was the whole reason why this thing was invented. So we're gonna use it for eyelets today to show you that you have more purposes than just one. So you've got the two different hole punches and the eyelets that you can see here in my container that I'm putting 
onto my tags you can rotate around these black squares did you know that they like rotate around and then you can customize it to the size you need for your eyelet you clamp down and it creates this adorable tag with an eyelet on it then go ahead and wrinkle up that bigger tag first and then just thread them all onto some twine and then now I'm going to attach these little tags onto one of the handles of the teacups and you have the most whimsical, adorable home decor piece to display in your home. This project is so easy, and right now at the Dollar Tree, they have these beautiful cups. I'm gonna be taking one of these shot glasses that come in a pack of three, and I'm gonna simply glue that onto the one that has the butterflies, and it says happiness grows here. I think that this is such a beautiful way to have some extra mood lighting in your home. I'm just gonna pop that on, flip it over, let it dry, and then pop some candles in it and put it in my bathroom. For this project, we're gonna be taking three of these crates and four of these tall glasses. Now, do you remember those tall candles? They have started selling the vases without the wax candles in them, which is so awesome. These are actually over in the floral section and over by the home stuff, like the home decor things. So it could also be by those candles that have the picture of the savior on it. So go ahead and tape off your glass at halfway in the middle of it and while those are outside drying because I spray painted them white we're gonna go ahead and take these three boxes and we're gonna glue them together once I've used some wood glue and some hot glue because we want to make sure we're using that wood glue in there too for that long-term hold I went ahead and took some dark brown paint and I'm going to just brush that all over my box this is going to give such a beautiful farmhouse, French country look to it. Once that is all dry, and as well as the glass jars, go ahead and take off that painter's tape, put in some foam. I glued everything down in there, even, yes, the glass jars, because I'm not going to really put real water in this. I'm just going to always put faux flowers, and I have cats in my house, and I don't want them to knock these over. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and just glue down in some boxwood, and some Spanish moss and then inside these glass jars I can display some beautiful florals for whatever season and switch it out all year long. This canister jar is super popular at the Dollar Tree and I love it so much. So we're gonna actually turn this into a treat jar. I have a pup in my home and she loves treats. She's a very good dog. I love her so much. She's like one of my children. So we're gonna go ahead and make this jar for her in mind. Now I'm gonna take my painter's tape and I'm gonna find that middle point. I'm gonna wrap some tape at the bottom and the top but leaving that middle part exposed because we're gonna take it outside and spray paint it white. Now, if you don't happen to have a Cricut on hand, remember there are things called rub-ons and they do sell them at the Dollar Tree. 
So go ahead and pick some of those up because we're going to do something really cool with those. Now if you have any bleeds come through that painter's tape, this is how you fix it. If it's still tacky and wet, you can use a wipey to get most of it up. And if it's dry, then you just use one of these sanding blocks and it comes right off really easily. Now I'm going to take those rub-ons from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut out dog treats. I had so much fun doing this part because, I don't know, I just like rub-ons. I've always loved rub-ons. I'm a girl from the 90s who scrapbooked. <laughs> so I really love rub-ons. If you're from the 90s and you scrapbooked, you know what I'm talking about. But now, you know, they have crickets and silhouettes. So whatever works for you, you could even put stickers on it and Mod Podge it with a mat that would seal it in, that would work too. I just had to try this hack and I wanted to know if it works on every cup. Now I found these whiskey cups at the Dollar Tree. I loved the size of them and I loved the thick glass at the bottom. I saw online that you could take white vinegar, pour it into a Pyrex dish, and then let those soak. And those stickers are supposed to come off. But guess what? They do not come off on etched glass stickers. So if it's something that's like a vinyl sticker, they totally come off. But if it's etched glass, nope, it doesn't work. So I just want to let you know that is totally busted. All right, we're gonna go to plan B for those whiskey glasses, but first let's work on these bigger vases that you can get in the floral section. I'm gonna wrap a thicker band and a thinner band around it, leaving the majority of this glass exposed. And if your lines are not lining up perfectly, remember you can use a craft knife and cut very thin straight lines and be able to clean that up. Now remember those whiskey glasses? I went ahead and wrapped some painter's tape as well around the base where that thicker, chunkier part of the cup was, and I spray painted inside of that glass so that you see the color all inside, all around the sides, but except for where the chunky glass is at the bottom, and it almost like illuminates that glass, which looks so cool, so pretty. Now I was envisioning this project for a wedding. I think these would be so beautiful on a table at a wedding and it's so cost friendly. If you are throwing any weddings that are coming up soon, grab some of these taller vases, two of them, and four of these whiskey cups and line them all up with some candles and florals and you've got yourself a high-end gorgeous centerpiece. This project is so fun, and we're not going to be using spray paint on this. You could if you found sea glass spray paint, but I want to show you how to save money and not have to go out to track down that spray paint. You can actually get the sea glass or depression glass look by using Mod Podge and food coloring. Now, I'm going to take some food coloring on a popsicle stick, and I'm going to work that in. And what we're going to be doing is creating an ombre effect where we're going from darker to lighter. And I mixed up a couple of different food colors because I wanted to get a dark blue. So I did a blue and a black and just mixed it. At first it looks teal, which is a little tricky to the eye, but when it dries, you're going to see when I move on to the next glass that it's going to get darker and it turns dark blue. Here is also the trick about these Make sure you take your time to not have the paint clump up around the bumpy sides because that won't dry as smooth and finished with a nice polished look. Now we're going to move on to thinning out the paint color. 
you're going to dump out half of that paint color and then add in more Mod Podge. This is going to lessen the color and it's going to allow you to create that ombre effect while you're still staying in the same color hues. Go over your next three glasses. And here's the thing, if you have a whole bunch of these, you could always make that last a long way and do more jars than just what I'm doing. That's why I had to dump out half. I don't have more than just three of each jar. But you could do this as a project and sell them at a craft show. That would be so cool to sell these if you're looking for crafts to sell and have some extra money for more crafts that you want to purchase. <laughs> so once I went through that next color, I dumped out half of it again and added in more Mod Podge to bring it down again, 50% less than the original second color that we did. Now I wanted to share something personal. My family has fallen in love with The Chosen. We are the last ones to the party. I know a lot of people are talking about this and I kind of wanted to save it because my oldest son, he's preparing for his mission for our church and right now he's reading through the New Testament and I also wanted to kind of save it closer to Easter. So with that all being said, oh my word friends, it is so uplifting. It's such a beautiful message. And yes, they did take creative rights in some areas to fill in the gaps, but it's so beautiful and uplifting. So if you haven't had a chance yet, check it out. I promise you'll love it as much as my family is. All right, in the end, you're going to go ahead and pop those back in after they've dried for a little bit and you've got yourself some beautiful jars to display. I had the greatest time creating these and working with glass and spray paint and just making them look high end and beautiful with that French country farmhouse look. I love blue and I love green. So I hope this inspires you as well. Thank you so much for being here today. I can't express how much you all mean to me and being able to share in something I'm so passionate about, which is crafting. I'm so grateful for all of you. Please do give this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. Now I'm going to recommend this right here, this video. I hope you will enjoy it and check that one out as well if you haven't already. And don't forget all those links that I put down below in the description box. And until the next episode, bye friends.